I got a studio microphone so that I can make love to your ear hole using my voice. March 13th, 2014. The People's Radio! The People's Radio is brought to you by The Working Class. The thoughts and opinions expressed on The People's Radio do not necessarily reflect the thoughts and opinions of The People's Radio, of the supporters of The People's Radio, or of anyone else. You have been warned. We got a lot to talk about today. We got a lot to get going. We got to go, go, go. Folks, think about fracking. I want you to think about fracking. Let's talk about fracking. Let's talk about fracking. Let's talk about fracking. Do you know what fracking is? Do you know how fracking works? Do you know what they do? Fracking is when they take a drill, and they drill a hole down into the ground, and then, oh, we're talking deep, deep hole, uh, like a mile down, a couple miles down, deep hole, really deep into the ground. Once they've drilled that hole, then they pump in this um, operational fluid, this this operative water, this uh, salt water. This it's 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 full of the most toxic chemicals you can possibly imagine just getting this stuff on your skin burns like acid inhaling the fumes is enough to kill you they pump this water this toxic sludge down into the ground because you know that's what we want in our ground toxic sludge but they they pump this toxic sludge down in the ground at extremely high pressure. And the idea is that they, they then impact the, the bedrock, the actual ground itself, with the pressure of the fluid. And this actually makes the bedrock itself break up into tiny pieces. They are fracturing rock. They are fracking and when you break up all the rock, and we're talking about, I mean, they're breaking up rock for, for miles. When you break it up, all of the old natural gas deposits that's been sitting inside uh, the rock and the, and the cavities and, and, the, and the gravel and, and the assorted, I'm not a geologist, the assorted makeup of the, uh, of the ground... It all comes loose. It's like shaking a soda can. The the carbon dioxide is in the liquid. It's there, but you can't even see it. You don't even know it's there until you shake it up. And once you you disturb it, once you move it, once you tap it, once you impact it, once you frack it, the fizz comes out. All of the gas comes out. And this is what they're doing. They are fracking our land. And they are making it fizz like a soda. They are making the natural gas deposits come out, come loose from the ground. Now, that doesn't necessarily sound all that bad. But they're doing it everywhere they possibly can, and they're doing it as much as they possibly can. They are literally littering our nation our country, our landscape is being just littered with thousands upon thousands upon thousands of fracking wells, as far as the eye can see. They they have covered an extremely large segment of our country now. And they, they want to keep expanding. They want to frack down here in Florida in the Everglades. They want to frack throughout Texas. They want to frack everywhere they possibly can. If they think they can extract any little bit of gas, they're all on board. They're ready to go. They're ready to expand. They're calling it the natural gas boom. Yes, yes, yes. What a boom it is. What a boom it is. That toxic sludge they pump into the ground, there's no possible way that they can get it all out because some's going to remain even when you pump it out. We all know that. 
when they pump it out, though, there's they're supposed to handle it in a safe manner. They're supposed to take care of it, but they don't. Companies repeatedly have been caught just allowing this nasty, disgusting, toxic sludge that is deadly, deadly to human beings. And they're just pumping it out on the ground. They're just leaving it out to evaporate. Uh, They're pumping it into uh, leaky storage tanks and then just allowing it to leak out slowly. They are not taking care of it. They're not being safe. All right? They are literally extracting every last bit of gas out from under your feet. They are taking the natural resources of your country from you. They are sucking it dry. They are squeezing it for every last drop that they can possibly get. And they're selling it on the open market. And they're making billions today. And that gas is being burned today. And that gas will not be there tomorrow. That money will not be there tomorrow. That natural resource will not be there tomorrow. They are robbing you. They are robbing you. They are taking from you. They are taking your natural resource. They are taking the natural resource you have a birthright to. They are taking the resources of humanity. This goes beyond nationality or country divides, imaginary lines in the dirt. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about flags. We're talking about the resources that humankind itself will need to sustain its future growth For the next 100 years, 200 years, 300 years, 500 years, 10,000 years. I hope humanity is around for 10,000 years. I hope humanity is around for another 10,000 years. I hope humanity is around for another 100,000 years. I hope humanity continues to exist perpetually. That's the goal. Now, folks, if you're new to this program, we are a transhumanist movement. We believe in transhumanism. We believe in modifying ourselves to become better. We believe in enhancing our cognition, enhancing our muscle strength, enhancing our longevity. We believe in destroying disease, destroying cancer, destroying HIV, destroying... Anything that holds a human being back. We believe in completely removing and eliminating all of our limitations. But we have to be very careful how we do it. We have to make sure that we maintain humanity. We have to make sure we remain humans. How how many... How many politicians do you think are paid to allow these corporations to take the resources from you, to, to, to extract and to consume all of the resources? How much do you think they're paid? They're paid millions. Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington recently did a scientific survey. They discovered that 88% of Congress is paid by fracking oil industries, oil and gas industries, fracking companies. 88% of your politicians, 80% of the money went to Republicans. Republicans. I want you to think about that. Folks, we have a problem. We have a serious problem because the singularity needs resources. What do you think we will do when our machines come alive? 
When the singularity happens, when the singularity occurs, and we suddenly have the ability to to build anything, to construct anything, when we are when we are terraforming planets, we're going to need resources, and we're going to look back at our home planet, and we're going to look at how foolish we were, how we how we ruined everything in the beginning. Because we were children and we didn't know what we were doing. We didn't know the damage we were causing to our own planet. Can it be repaired? Yes, absolutely. The number one message preached here is that human beings will become transhuman. They will become like gods. And our living machines, our children, will be gods. They will be more powerful, smarter, more capable than us. Terraforming is definitely in the future. Terraforming is definitely coming. It's going to happen. We will change entire planets to to be whatever we want them to be. We will learn to clean and repair our environment. And this has nothing to do with the the snapping turtle or the spotted hooting owl. This, This has everything to do with the fact that human beings demand to live in a nice environment. They want to live in a nice environment. They want to live in a clean, natural environment. And they want to be able to get back in touch with nature because we have not forgotten our lowly origins. We have not forgotten. This is the reason why we like to go camping. We like to get out, get back in touch with nature. It releases stress. Have you been camping recently? Go camping. Take your family camping. That's an order. (laughs) Take your family camping. You'll love it. You'll feel better. A little secret though. Take as few as things possible so that the trip is relaxing instead of just a chore. 88% of Congress is fracked. 88%. Roman's not burning, it's burnt. The politicians will not save you. We must create the singularity ourselves. We must be the ones to form a a collective. We must be the ones to form a movement. We must be the ones to form a group. They're not going to do it for us. They are too busy arguing over who gets what share of natural gas. They are too busy arguing over a finite resource. They are too busy arguing over gold, silver, Currency. They are too busy arguing over petty material things that only last for 30, 40, 50, 60 years, that only are possessed by a human during his lifetime. I am offering you immortality, transhumanism. How would you like to live forever? How would you like to live with your family forever? Even after death. You will be able to come in and spend time with your family, see how things are going. Folks, this is not a dream. I am not speaking nonsense. This is reality. This is the future. As we learn to expand our mind into the cloud, as we learn to share our consciousness with machines, as we learn to artificially enhance our ability to think, there will be two parts of us. There will be the organic and the non-organic, the inorganic. There will be us, the human, and then there will be the machine. This is the reason why we have to be careful. We have to make sure that we maintain our humanity, we maintain our compassion. Because once we become transhuman, I'm afraid our giant intellect might actually stop the production of art. And what a tragedy that would be. What a tragedy that would be. How terrible that would be. Humanity existing without art. Humanity existing without love. Ladies and gentlemen, don't ever miss the point to life we are here to experience compassion and empathy and love and togetherness we are here to be together
together as human. We are here to experience the universe from a human perspective. Greetings. We are from the future. Everything is going to be all right. The future is a beautiful place, but you'll need some training in order to inhabit it. In the future, technology evolves faster than any human mind can think. When the singularity occurred, we became like gods, able to create entire worlds in the blink of an eye. Every thought had drastic immediate impact. All of our dreams became a reality. But so did our nightmares. The future became a battle of ideas. We had to learn to direct our minds to prevent dark psychological forces from destroying all of us. Now with every new world we create, we summon the sacred imperative for life. Let there be light. 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 How can we be from the future? You might ask. Let us explain. Plants harvest light with near perfect efficiency, but this is impossible under classical physics. Along the way to the photosynthesizing core, photons of light should collide with other particles, but they don't. A photon reaching the core is as likely to succeed as you sprinting blindfolded through a dense forest, reaching the center without striking a single tree. Plants are engaged in a kind of miracle. The plant puts the photon into a state of quantum superposition. Multiplying it by every route that photon could possibly take. Imagine blindly sprinting through a forest, being multiplied into every one of the billions of possible paths. If any one of your possibilities were observed hitting a tree, the superposition would collapse, and that would be your final outcome. But the plant patiently refuses to observe any of these casualties. While at its heart, it continues to sing, "Let there be light." Let there be light. 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 When any of the possibilities finally reaches the core without fail, only that winner is observed. All the other possibilities disappear. The winner is transmitted back through time, from the future, and becomes the only possibility that ever existed. This is how photons reach the plant's core with impossible precision. This is how you and every organism in existence overcame the massive improbabilities of life. This is how we are from the future. This is how you will become the light of the world, as we invoke the sacred imperative together. Let there be light. 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 Let them 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 be light. That was Garrett John Laparto talking about the singularity. You can look him up on YouTube. Garrett John. It's Way Seer News. It's YouTube forward slash user forward slash W. A Y S E E R N E W S. Folks, the singularity is real. It's going to happen. We are going to build it in our lifetimes. But we're not on that segment yet. Every single week, I want to talk about our progress and our plans for the future and how we're going to make the singularity, but 
for the most part, right now, because we are in the very first stages of our exponential growth curve, because we are at the first drop, the first second drop, the very start of this movement, I just want to start laying out intentions, beliefs, opinions, thoughts, commentary, you know. I want to have fun with this a little bit and come into it. Because I've never been a radio personality before. I, I don't know exactly what I'm doing. But I'm trying. For you, the listener. I'm going to try to make this transition into the singularity as smooth as possible for all of humanity. And although people may not realize that just yet. They eventually will. RichardDawkins.net has a story up right now where climate change, for the first time in 30,000 years, climate change has thawed permafrost that has been frozen for 30,000 years. And because of that, we now have a new virus that we've never seen before that thawed out, and it's alive. Because uh, a virus is not like a normal cellular life. It doesn't, like, like our cells, when you freeze them, they, like, they, they burst and break because of uh, ice crystals forming inside the cell, which actually punctures the membrane of the cell itself and causes damage to the internal uh, things in the cell. So, for example, I, I plan to be frozen when I, when I die so that I can be brought back uh, in the event that I, I die before the singularity. But it with a virus, it's not exactly the same. I mean, it's not really a, a cell. It's just kind of a an RNA fragment that has learned to inject itself into cells in order to hijack that cell and convince that cell to start producing more virus. So you can take a virus and you can freeze it and you can bring it back. That's it, normally not a problem. So we now have a giant virus nobody's ever seen before. We have no idea what it does. We don't know. And it's awake for the first time in 30,000 years. It's awake for the first time since before the pyramids were built, since before Jerusalem was built, since before Babylon. It's awake. We've got it in a lab. That doesn't mean that's the only one. If, if one of them thought out, you, you know that, you know, there's more. It, this might not be... The problem, this particular virus might not be the problem. But, there's going to be more. What other life forms are we going to uncover that we have no idea exists on this planet because of climate change? What is going to happen? We don't know. We don't know. There could be an HIV type virus that is spread like the flu from coughing. And it's in Siberia somewhere, and it's frozen, and we don't know about it. And then, because of climate change, it's unleashed for the first time ever. And then, some pig or or or, or, or tiger, lion, whatever, some mammal contracts it, and then it spreads to the human population. These these are all possible scenarios. It's just very unlikely. It's very unlikely because the human body is the human body, and diseases have to evolve to attack the human body because we have one hell of an immune system. That is your gift from your ancestors. I want you to I want you to remember that always. Your parents, if you're listening to me and your parents are dead, your grandparents are dead, your great grandparents are dead. If you know of ancestors that are dead, thank them. They gave you your immune system. You're alive today because of them but anyway it's very unlikely that a disease from a different time period would 
fit perfectly in our metabolism, in our body, and cause some serious damage. That's very unlikely. It's a very unlikely scenario. But it's possible. It's possible. I mean, this is... This is... This is insanity. I don't know what to say. We are running the most deadliest, dangerous experiment in the history of mankind. We are churning out more carbon dioxide, more deadly chemicals, more carcinogens, more greenhouse gases than ever before. And every single day it gets worse. Every single day it gets worse. Every single day we put out more and more and more and more and more and more. China is growing. We are starting finally, after our recession, we're finally starting to grow again. But... Folks, we gotta rein it in. We gotta we gotta bring in this pollution. We must. We must do it. Have you ever visited China? Dear conservative, dear climate change denier, dear person listening to my voice that does not believe that man has the ability to change the climate, I want you to visit China. I want you to go visit China. Go visit those people. See what they live in. Their industrial base is so dirty and so disgusting, they create their own weather patterns. Lung cancer is soaring. Disease illness is soaring. They have to wear masks most most days. When they're walking around just going to work every day, they have to wear a mask because the air in the city is so clogged and polluted and smogged up. It's toxic to them. This is our future, ladies and gentlemen. This is what we are building currently. Where do you think those fumes go? Do you think they magically disappear? No, they go into your atmosphere, the atmosphere that you are breathing. The Chinese do not live on a different planet. They live on the same planet that you do. They're using the same atmosphere, the same jet stream, the same air that you're breathing. The only difference is by the time it's reached you, it's dissipated and some of it has gone back into nature. Some of it has been cleaned up by trees and and, 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 uh, algae. But you still get... Folks, it's a scientific fact. Your chances of getting cancer is now higher than they would have been 100, 200 years ago. Because the air back then was clean. We were not churning out smokestack after smokestack after smokestack. Millions of cubic feet of toxic, just greenhouse gases just being pumped constantly. They're pumping it into the air right now as I'm talking. They're pumping it into the air while you're listening to this. They're pumping it into the air constantly. We've got to do something. There are very simple things that we can do, but our politicians refuse. The politicians will not save you, folks. It's time for the people to get organized. It's time for us to get organized. It's time for us to stop this mass madness. China's working on it. China is trying. They understand they have a problem. They've just ordered their wind farm factories, their their wind turbine factories, the factories that make their wind turbines. They've ordered them to speed up production. Folks, they were running 24-7 before. They were running three shifts 24-7, night and day. Those workers don't even leave. They keep working. They're churning out wind turbines as fast as they can possibly make them. And the Chinese government told them, speed up! We need more! Meanwhile, in America, we're doing the exact opposite. The exact opposite. We're trying to run away from renewable energy. Our politicians are trying to fight against it. Your politicians are fighting against your interests. They don't want you to have cleaner air. They don't want you to have cleaner water. They want you to be forced to buy bottled water from a for-profit corporation. They want you to have to buy respirators from a for-profit corporation. They want you to die so that you have to buy a casket from a for-profit corporation. You are nothing but a dollar sign to them. You have been reduced to nothing but a dollar sign. You are an amount. Your life is just an amount to the profiteers. 
There's a reason for this. There's a reason education sucks, and it's the same reason that it will never, ever, ever be fixed. It's never going to get any better. Don't look for it. Be happy with what you got. Because the owners of this country don't want that. I'm talking about the real owners now. The real owners, the big wealthy business interests that control things and make all the important decisions. Forget the politicians. The politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. You have no choice. You have owners. They own you. They own everything. They own all the important land. They own and control the corporations. They've long since bought and paid for the Senate, the Congress, the state houses, the city halls. They got the judges in their back pockets. And they own all the big media companies, so they control just about all of the news and information you get to hear. They got you by the balls. They, they spend billions of dollars every year lobbying, <laughs> lobbying to get what they want. Well, we know what they want. They want more for themselves and less for everybody else. But I'll tell you what they don't want. They don't want a population of citizens capable of critical thinking. They don't want well-informed, well-educated people capable of critical thinking. They're not interested in that. That doesn't help them. That's against their interest. That's right. They don't want people who are smart enough to sit around the kitchen table to figure out how badly they're getting fucked by a system that threw them overboard 30 fucking years ago. They don't want that. You know what they want? They want obedient workers. Obedient workers. People who are just smart enough to run the machines and do the paperwork and just dumb enough to passively accept all these increasingly shittier jobs with the lower pay, the longer hours, the reduced benefits, the end of overtime, and the vanishing pension that disappears the minute you go to collect it. And now they're coming for your social security money. They want your fucking retirement money. They want it back so they can give it to their criminal friends on Wall Street. And you know something? They'll get it. They'll get it all from you sooner or later because they own this fucking place. It's a big club and you ain't in it. <laughs> you and I are not in the big club. And by the way, it's the same big club they used to beat you over the head with all day long when they tell you what to believe. All day long beating you over the head in their media telling you what to believe, what to think, and what to buy. The table is tilted, folks. The game is rigged. And nobody seems to notice. Nobody seems to care. Good, honest, hard-working people, white collar, blue collar, doesn't matter what color shirt you have on. Good, honest, hard-working people continue. These are people of modest means. Continue to elect these rich cocksuckers who don't give a fuck about them. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't care about you at all, at all, at all. Yeah. You know? And nobody seems to notice, nobody seems to care. That's what the owners count on, the fact that Americans will probably remain willfully ignorant of the big red, white, and blue dick that's being jammed up their assholes every day. Because the owners of this country know the truth. It's called the American dream, because you have to be asleep to believe it. Last year, Wall Street gave out $26.7 billion in bonus checks. Bonus checks. Bonus. Checks. Checks for... Good job, sport. Here's a pat on the back. $26.7 billion. B, 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 That is... 27,000 million dollars. In America, we currently have 1,085,000 full-time minimum wage workers. 1,085,000 people. Over a million people. If you were to add up all of their wages, all of their minimum wage paychecks for that whole year, they don't make $26 billion. The people on Wall Street made more money in bonus checks last year than all of the American minimum wage workers combined. All million, 85,000 of them. There are two different worlds. There are two different societies. 
If you are listening to me, you should know which one you belong to. You are the working class. You are the American worker. You have forgotten your power. You have forgotten you are the one that makes the country run. You are the one that elects the politicians. You hold all of the keys to the country. All of them. Without you, the lights in the factory don't come on in the morning. Without you, the parts to the factory don't get delivered. Without you, the parts don't get assembled inside the factory. Without you, nothing happens. You could have all the Mitt Romneys in the world sign all the pieces of paper in the world and sign over every single check in the world and they never, ever will get anything done without workers working, without laborers laboring. And they know it. They know it. They think you are beneath them. They think they are better than you. It's not because they're evil. It's human psychology. It's how it works. Humans have a frame of reference. Their opinions are subjective. They come to conclusions based on the information that is presented to them, based on the experiences that they have experienced in their life. They don't know what it's like to be a worker, to struggle, to have to decide, should I buy food this month, or should I try to bum food off of a friend and pay my car bill instead. They don't know what it's like to have to put a medical bill on a credit card because you can't afford to pay it, because you have to decide to pay rent and your power bill instead. I don't know what that's like. You do. They no longer live in the same world you do. They live in a world with chauffeurs, with cooks and maids and servants. They live in a world where they don't have to clean their own home. Somebody else does it for them. They live in a world where they don't have to cook their own meals. Somebody else does it for them. And I'm not talking about fast food, crappy, bad for you, as cheap as possible food. I'm talking about they have the best, most healthiest, delicious, gourmet food on the planet. It's a feudal system, folks. It's the feudal system. They are monarchs. You are not. They own all the land. They own all the factories. They own you. You are their peasant. But don't worry. We are now coming into the singularity. Money will not survive. Money is not going to survive the singularity. No amount of money will save them. No amount of checks will save them. No amount of stocks or bonds will save them. They are filling their minds with useless knowledge. We will transition to a resource-based economy. The human beings on planet Earth will demand it. As they come together, as they become more equal and their exchange of information and ideas, as they come to learn each other's plight, and to relate with each other, they will come together. That's what's happened throughout all history. Human beings have always looked for uh, some common thread to bring them together, some common goal, some, some common trait. Human beings have always tried to form up together because together we are mighty, we are strong, we can do anything. Separate as individuals, we fall apart, we're weak, we're nothing. That is the power of humanity. The collective power of individuals to come together and to form a coherent movement or group. You have forgotten your power. I am here to remind you. 
all of the media in America, all of the major news stations, all of the major media outlets, are all owned by six corporations. Six corporations. You get all of your news, all of your information that you base your political thoughts and, and ideals and opinions on, all of that is fed to you. Fed to you by corporations. They tell you what they want you to know. They tell you what they want you to hear. George Carlin was right. The game is rigged. It's tilted. You thought Fox News was the problem? No. They're all in on it. Are you kidding me? They all push a corporate agenda. A corporate message. More for them, less for you. But it's okay. It's okay. Because the American worker is going to remember. The American worker will remember his power. There's no way they can stop it. They're trying to stop it, though. They're trying to prevent technology from giving you power. They don't want you, the consumer, to be powerful. They do not want you to be informed. They do not want you to make decisions. They want to make those decisions for you. But technology is going to make that impossible. Technology is going to give you, and I, and everyone a level playing field. But the technocrats know that, and they're preparing for it. Folks, we have to start getting ready ourselves. We have to start preparing ourselves. Organizing for humanity will feed every single human being on the planet. We will do it. We are going to cure all the disease, all illness. We will do it. We are going to become transhuman. We will do it. There's nothing stopping us. Politicians cannot stop us. The economy cannot stop us. Money cannot stop us. Money holders cannot stop us. Nothing can stop the progress of mankind except for apathy. Except for laziness. Except for sitting around and waiting to die. We have to get busy. I've been working. I've been trying to get this radio program up. I have the People's Radio on Reddit. I have a wiki for agricultural knowledge. Have you been to the wiki? Have you contributed to the wiki? If you go to the People's Radio on Reddit, you'll see a link to the wiki. If you're a listener, I want you to go to the wiki. I want you to contribute. I don't care if... Your own contribution was just one paragraph, one sentence. You have to know something about agriculture. You have to know something about planting a seed. Come tell us about it. Give us a platform to jump from. Give us our first few articles. Let's get this party going. The wiki's long term. Wiki's going to take years to finish. Just like folding. We're going to finish the folding at home project. We are going to finish it. In the meantime, before we start constructing our data centers, you need to fold at home. Install folding at home. Members of Organizing for Humanity fold 24-7. My computer is folding right now while it's recording this program. This is important. I cannot stress how important this is. Every single protein that you fold now is knowledge stored in the bank of human knowledge. It cannot be undiscovered, unfolded. It cannot be lost. Thanks to cloud computing, we're a little beyond that now. Computers should remember everything. Now remember, we are naked and raw right now. We are unprotected. Humanity could be taken out 
by a rogue comet, asteroid, or a sun flare. Nothing is guaranteed in life. We have to fight for it. We have forgotten. We have forgotten our fight, our struggle. We have forgotten the point to life, the point to existence itself. Eat, survive, reproduce, advance. Eat, survive, reproduce, advance. Never stop learning. Never stop becoming. Never stop evolving. Never stop being. Never stop doing. Always move forward. Always learn something new every single day. Always try to appreciate something from a new perspective every single day. Try to learn something about your fellow man every single day. Learn something about another culture every single day. Learn something about science every single day. Learn something about math every single day. Get one of those books that you put into the bathroom. Get one of those books that will feed you factoids. Learn. Feed your brain. And it will grow. You have to stimulate yourself. Objects in motion remain in motion. Objects in motion snowball. Just a tiny force can gather up a lot of steam and become a powerful, mighty thing. You can be that thing. Do not wait for somebody else to tell you what to do. The singularity will be crowdsourced. We will all be a part of it. There will not be any leaders. We will all be connected to each other. Imagine Facebook. But there's no such thing as friends. Everybody is connected to everybody's Facebook. Only we're talking at the same time. And you are digesting all of that information in the cloud. The second part of your your consciousness, the upper level of your mind, is operating in silicon. It is operating in the cloud. You will be able to comprehend concepts that your organic mind was never able to grasp on its own. We are right there. We are right there at the singularity. This is going to happen. This is not science fiction. Listen to me, millennials. Listen to me, young generation of America. This is not science fiction. We are building this world right now. You must be ready for it. Or... You will turn into the next Reaganites. You will turn into the next baby boomers. The world will spring up around you and you will be confused. You won't know what's going on. Your children will have to explain to you how to check your mail. Your children will have to explain to you the advances that are happening in society. Don't end up that way. Start using your mind now. Start learning, start evolving, start growing, start advancing. Thirst for knowledge. Thirst for truth. Empirical truth. Empirical knowledge. Demand that we learn more. Do experiments yourself at your house. I don't care, just do it. Try. Try something new. This is your right as a human being. Do not let anybody take it from you. Don't let them enslave you. Do not let them put you into a suburban home and sit you down in front of a TV and feed you ice cream and 300 commercials of shit you need to buy. Don't let them feed you corporate garbage media that just tells you that you're powerless and you're worthless and you can't do anything and you have to wait on the politicians and you have to wait on the capitalists and you have to wait on your owners to tell you what to do. Don't wait. Get up. Stand up. Right now. Say I'm a human being and I demand to be treated that way. I demand a fair wage. Do you feel like you're getting a fair wage currently? 
Did you know the work product- productivity of the American worker has steadily increased over the past 60 years? Did you know the pay for CEOs, the pay for Wall Street tycoons, the pay for bankers has steadily increased with work productivity? Did you know that? You make more and they make more. But your wages have been frozen since the 60s. They have not increased. You don't make any more. Every single year, the dollar is worth less. You don't make more. Every single year, you make more dollars for your company, and your company does not give you any more. You're not getting your fair share. You're not getting your fair shake. They are robbing from you. They are taking from you. They are stealing your wages. They are stealing the money that you earn. They are stealing the wealth that you generated. And they call it capitalism. And they say that it's fair. Because free market. There's no such thing as a free market. There's absolutely no such thing as a free market. A free market is a myth. A free market is a fairy tale. A free market is the American dream. Just rebrand it so that you will believe it. It's just a buzzword. Free market is just a dog whistle so that the corporatists will know to come running. It's a call to the profiteers to come and profit. To rape and pillage and plunder and take. You you think I'm you think I'm, I'm using colorful language? You think I'm a little bit off my rocker? They are literally extracting your fuel from under your feet while you sit there listening to me. They are sucking it out from under the land that you think that you own. They are taking it from you. They are taking it from you right now. And you're not getting anything. You're getting nothing. They are promising that if you just let them do this, the price at the pump will go down. The price of gasoline at the pump will go down. Folks, it's a lie. You don't run natural gas in your car. (laughs) I mean, you can modify a car to run natural gas, but you don't run natural gas in your car. You run gasoline. That's a petroleum byproduct. You take crude oil, you cook it up, you boil it up, and then gasoline rises to the top and they skim it off and you run it in your automobile. Folks, natural gas is not helping you. We sell the majority of natural gas that we extract from the ground. The corporatists are taking your fuel from under your feet and they are selling it to other countries. They are selling it to other industries at rock bottom prices. Why rock bottom prices? Simple. Because everybody else is selling at a higher price and they want to make as much money as they possibly can in their lifetime. They do not care about the environment. They do not care about your life. They do not care about your family's farm. They don't care about your family's property. They don't care about you. They don't care about your children. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't give a fuck about you at all. They are taking from you right now. It's okay though. It's okay. You need to know it's okay. They will not survive the technological singularity. Their job will not survive the technological singularity. The entire industry of Wall Street will not survive the technological singularity. Once all men are equal, once we have living machines that are smarter and more capable than men, what, what can a Wall Street banker possibly do? What's he going to do? Tell he's he's going to tell the living machine, "Oh no, 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 no. Just if you if you read this Milton Friedman quote and I tell you about the free market, I'll convince you. A living machine will only listen to empiricism. It's not going to listen to human uh human it's tribalism. It's tribalism, it's feudalism. A human machine, or a living machine, is not going to listen to that. A living machine will not care. A living machine will call them out for what they are and what they are doing. They are taking your resources. They are taking a disproportionate amount of resources from you. 
All of the wealth that you are generating is concentrated at the top and they are holding on to it and they won't let you have any. They are intentionally keeping you from accessing it because they know, they know, if you ever did just just have just a small portion of what is owed to you, you could take that money and do whatever you wanted. You could you could quit your job and go find another one. You could start your own company. You could change professions. You could go back to school. You could you could take some time off and have another child. You could do whatever you wanted. Because you have already produced that wealth. You have already produced that money. You have already produced. And they have taken from you that production. It's about time for me to get out of here for today. But don't worry. Big things are in the works. The website will be up soon. And then we'll start to build our community. I want you to be a member of our community. I want you to join us. I want you to join the human race as we ascend to transhumanism, as we become demigods, as we create our children, our offspring. Let me tell you something, folks. Let me tell you something. I've got got a couple of minutes here. I understand the purpose to life. I understand why we are here. I understand. For 31 years, I... I didn't get it. I tried almost every religion uh, that I uh, that I came across. I tried spirituality naked and raw, non-denominational. I tried different belief systems. I tried different philosophies. But I now know why we are here. I now know what the purpose and meaning to life is. This is what I offer you. Nothing less. Meaning and purpose. I recently had a daughter. And I suffer from depression. And from time to time, I can get down. And I can start to be sad. And I went through a period in my life where I I wondered, what was the point? What is the point? What's the point to life? It's just suffering. Happiness is merely temporary relief from suffering. That's what it feels like when you're depressed. It feels like there's no hope. It feels like there's nothing that can be done. And then I saw my daughter. And I remembered. I remembered why we are here. I remembered the whole point to life, to existence. We are here to create something better than ourselves. We are here to come together. To combine ourselves. To combine our strengths. So that from us will come an offspring than us. That's why we're here. Eat, survive, reproduce. Eat, survive, reproduce. Eat, survive, reproduce. We are not going to survive. We are going to live.